Okay, now I show you some features from the options page. For example, as you can see now, uh, we have everything running. We have a key split, and what you can do, for example, when you have uh, enabled the key split, you can go to options, and there you can, for example, choose uh, the way of triggering uh, how and when and where you want to trigger sounds. For example, you can see here we have E F G H, and it says always. So it, that does mean it will uh, will play back always. But for example, what you can do is, let's say you only want the kick, which is E in that case. You only want to trigger that when you play something in the left section or at the left side on the keyboard. Then you can do it like this. As you can see now, I'm playing something in the right range. And it's, it's triggering all the drums except the key. Uh, sorry, the kick. And now if I press something on the left side, the kick comes back in. Which is a bit hard to hear at that moment. Yeah. That's cool. This is a disturb effect is a bit loud. Okay. And uh, yes, this is something you can do always. Or you can, of course, choose the right section, so the, the opposite. Or you can do that, for example, for the whole drum section, like so. And the cool thing is, I will continue playing the drums as long as I have the keys, but if I press a new key, it will stop, and then you can get back into it again. Let's see, I quite like that, that hired stuff sounds a Robotic. What we? What can we do to change this? Let's see. Ah, yes, we could order the the oh, variation samples. Oh, yes. By the way, you get uh, every drum sound that you can select here. Every drum percussion sound and stuff has a uh, has two variations. So, except um, that means that you can easily. Oh, wait, wait, wait a moment. Okay, sorry. Uh, that you can easily um, program some variations. Like so, let me expand that a bit so that editing is a bit more easy. Yeah, I guess you can hear that. And that variation thing applies to uh, every, every section. So, by the way, Something else that I want to show is the, the arpeggiator pattern. It doesn't sound that convincing. Maybe we should raise the octave a bit. Oh yeah, that's way better. And now let's maybe use the mod wheel to bring in the low pass filter. Just click the mob wheel button. Oh, of course, we should do it for B and C as well. I quite like that. So, one additional thing that we could do maybe is rise the, the reverb, the scent level of the reverb when we rise the mod wheel as well. Let's try that. And okay, oh yeah, that could be a bit bit too much. So if you want to change something here with the um, external modulation, you can go to the mod wheel map. And from there you can control the all the, the ranges that the mod wheel should occupy, if that's the right word at that moment. Don't know. <laughs> Maybe we put it like there and see. What it does, yeah, it looks also dependent on the volume. Okay, let's see. Yeah, that does work quite well, a bit too much. Let's have, a, have it real huge. Oh, 
Oh, and there's something I didn't mention at all yet. Uh, and that is the in the loop section to the left. You have those all those little squares over here. And actually, these are uh, actually these are gates. So that means you can decide at what time uh, uh, it should trigger that particular slice, like so. Let's see, it's, it's the right section. So, oh yeah, sorry. As you can hear, it only plays those enabled slices. And it goes even further, and when you press it several times, those little spikes pop up, and what these do is they trigger a gate effect. Let's choose a different set of sounds. Oh, that sounds funky. Okay, we're not in categories. Let's bring back the pitch to normal. Let's do some randomization once again because uh, this is so much fun. <laughs> 